Hey everybody, welcome back to Magic Orthodoxy. My name is David. Hey, perhaps you're wondering, what are some of the very best trick decks? Like if you were gonna spend your money and you were gonna buy a deck of cards that could do some miracles, what would you get? That sounds like a great viewer's question. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for being here. I uh, did a video a while back, a couple weeks back, asking what are some of the greatest card tricks that you could do. And by that question, I kind of implied that there were no gaffs, no gimmicks. Like if you were just gonna use a regular deck of cards, right, regular deck, and you were gonna perform some incredible magic, right? What are some foundational go-to tricks? And if you haven't seen that yet, you can definitely go and find that one. Uh, but in the video, I asked the viewers, I said, if you guys have some ideas, um, you know, what would you, what would you guys pick? And so many of you, so many of you said the invisible deck. <laughs> and the invisible deck is great, right? It's great. Don't get me wrong. But the invisible deck is not a deck trick. It is a trick deck, <laughs> right? It's a trick deck. And so I thought, well, let's just talk about it then. Uh, another viewer uh, only last week said, hey, you should make a list then. You should make a, a list of all the best trick decks. And I thought, you know what? We should do that. We should do that right now. But before I do that, before I go into the list, I think we should definitely talk about uh, a magician who is responsible for many of these, and that is Ralph Hull. Uh, Ralph Hull was born in Crooksville, Ohio. And he grew up to be uh, a card magician, American card magician, and a magic author. His books include Eye Openers and More Eye Openers, Modernism in Pasteboards, Smart Magic, and 15 Minutes with a Rope. He also invented a number of commercial card tricks that we're gonna be looking at today. And he was a longtime performer at Coney Island. All right, so we're gonna get into the top 10, but first, a little ground rules. A little ground rules, okay? Because I realize that. Uh, this channel is a little more popular, more readily accessible by muggles. You know who you are, right? <laughs> We're gonna use some codes. We're gonna use code language, okay? I'm gonna use two uh, in particular going forward, okay? I'm gonna use L and S and R and S. L and S and R and S. And if you know, you know. And if you don't know, don't ask below because we will not answer. We will not answer. And if you reveal what those codes mean, if you take it upon yourself to reveal what those codes mean down below, your comment will be deleted. Okay? I'm trying to keep, keep magic a secret. All right? And you should help. All right. So I got 10 trick decks for you to look at, 10 to think about. And uh, I, I believe, I believe wholeheartedly that these are the best. These are the best top 10, okay? Best top 10. Going in order, going in order. And we're actually gonna start with a honorable mention. We're gonna start with an honorable mention. Coming in at number 11 is Card Tune from Dan Harlan. Card Tune from Dan Harlan is a more recent release, right? And uh, it's, it's a trick that you've seen. It's, it's a deck of cards that shows a little animated stick figure man. It's a little magician with a top hat and a, and a curtain. And the spectator selects a card. They can select any card they want. And then you riffle through the deck, right? And then the little character, he kind of like stop motion animates, flip book style, right? And he reaches into his hat and he pulls out the spectator's card. And it's a really great trick. And Dan Harlan fooled Penn and Teller uh, with his version two. I believe, and it is readily available. Uh, it's a wonderful trick, and uh, it's, a, it's a great little deck, and it's a lot of fun. And we are gonna go in numerical order. That's right, we're gonna go in one to 10 order. Why are we doing that? Why aren't we doing 10 to one? Well, because I have to. <laughs> I have to go in one to 10 order because these decks lead into the next one. It would be weird if I said, this deck is like this deck, and I haven't told you about this deck yet. Okay, so I have to go in order because they all lead into the next. So coming in at number one, the best trick deck you can possibly get is a Mark deck. The Mark deck is the best trick deck you can buy. And fortunately for you, I've done many reviews on the best Mark decks out there. And the reason why a Mark deck is the very best is because 
uh, it's going to pass inspection. Okay? You can hand the deck to your spectators. They can shuffle it. They can deal it with it. They can do all the things that you would do with a regular deck of cards, but the only difference is, the only advantage is, is it's marked, right? It's marked on the back and you know the markings. And if you get a good mark deck, especially a mark deck where the marks are hidden very well, uh, it's gonna fly right by magicians and spectators and you'll be able to do some incredibly powerful tricks with it. With a talented magician and a mark deck, there's, there's nothing you can't do. Coming in at number two, The Invisible Deck by Joe Berg. Uh, the Invisible Deck is a classic and it's the one that you guys kept mentioning for uh, best, uh, best card trick, right? Because it is. And I think many of us were introduced to this deck from David Blaine, right? He, he walked up to a, a guy in the park and uh, the guy that said, uh, that's incredible, that's incredible. Uh, that's, <laughs> that's amazing, my mind is totally blown. Remember, it was that guy. <laughs> so you just have the spectator name any card, right? Any card in, in a deck of 52, and you pull out the deck, and it is the one card that is turned over in the deck. The one card turned over in the deck. And uh, if you know, you know it's a R and S deck, right? It's an R and S deck. And it's probably the most famous one out of all of them. And we're gonna go through some others, and I'll even probably mention uh, that some of these others are similar to an invisible deck. And when I do, that's what I mean. Number three is the Svengali deck from Burling Hull. The Svengali deck is a one-way forcing deck that is also a L and S deck, right? So it's always gonna be the same force every single time. And if you need a custom Svengali deck, you can find them. But the advantage to the Svengali deck is if you spring the cards, right, or if you flip the cards, it'll give the appearance that every single card is different. But you can do some pretty crazy things with a Svengali deck. In fact, whole books have been devoted to tricks you can do with a Svengali deck. You can do a killer Akan, right? You can do a killer any card to any number uh, with a Svengali deck. And best of all, you know, there's no RNS on him, so you can deal through the cards one at a time. And the only disadvantage is, right, you can't hand it out. You can't hand it out to be inspected. Trick deck number four is the stripper deck or the tapered deck. Now, probably a lot of you would argue that this deck really deserves to be higher up. Probably put it higher than the Svengali deck. But I kind of think the Svengali and the tapered deck, they're kind of interchangeable. You could flip them this way or this way. They're, they're almost tied neck and neck as the two most popular, right? That, and the classics that have been around forever. But I think that some people favor one over the other. And personally, I favor the Svengali deck over the Taper deck. The Taper deck is just like it sounds. The cards are not perfectly rectangular. One side is tapered. And so what ends up happening is if a card is flipped end for end, running your fingers along the side of it, you can feel it. And so people who are really good at tapered deck work they can do some pretty crazy, impossible things with it. And most importantly, gambling routines, right? Because you can always find the four aces or find the four kings, find mates. Uh, there's all kinds of great routines you could do with a taper deck. And again, whole books, whole entire books have been devoted to this uh, deck of cards. Uh, one of the advantages of this is you could hand it out. You could hand it out, you could give it to a spectator, right? They wouldn't be able to feel any differences. The disadvantage is, if they end up shuffling it or twisting cards around, then you gotta kinda write it and, and fix it. But uh, a lot of people love the tapered deck. Trick deck number five is the mental photography deck from Ralph Hull. The deck, of course, is an L and S and an R and S. It's both of those. And it's a completely blank deck, front and back. You can show blanks all the way around. And with a simple cut, you can show all the card faces and all the card backs. It prints itself. Number six is the Brainwave deck from Di Vernon. That's right, Di Vernon is the creator of the Brainwave deck. What is the Brainwave deck? Well, it's exactly like the Invisible deck. It's exactly like the Invisible deck. So everything I said about the Invisible deck, applicable here, except with one extra kicker. And that is the back design is also a different color. So uh, let's say you have the deck of cards in your pocket and you tell the spectator, pick any card, they pick seven of spades. You pull out a red backed deck and you go through it and one card is reversed, the seven of spades, and when you turn it over, the back design is a different color. Number seven is the Mirage deck 
from Ralph Hull. What is the Mirage deck? Well, the Mirage deck is exactly like the Svengali deck. Okay, it's exactly like the Svengali deck in construction. However, the R and S has been added to it. So you can do every single trick that you could do, a uh, Svengali deck trick with the Mirage deck, but the only difference is now you could fan the cards kind of casually and not flash the force. And again, let me just add, you can do a killer any card to any number with a Mirage deck. A killer any card to any number. And that takes us to number eight, the Pop-Eyed Popper deck from Ralph Hull. Pop-Eyed Popper deck from Ralph Hull. This is exactly like the Mirage deck. So everything I said about the Mirage deck is applicable to the Pop-Eyed Popper, except for there's no L and S. No L and S. So it's a Mirage deck, exactly like a Mirage deck, but with no L and S. All right. We're getting to the end. We're getting to the end. Number nine, the Monte Cristo deck from Henry Hardin. Now there's two, there's two, and you're going to hear these interchangeably. So Monte Cristo, Henry Hardin, or the mastermind deck by Chris Kenworthy. As far as I know, they're identical. As far as I know, they're identical. If I'm wrong, you can tell me down below, but everything I've ever seen says they're identical. I, I have the mastermind deck. That's the one I have. Okay, but I've been told that the decks are interchangeable. All right, so what's so special about this deck? It is a one-way forcing deck. One-way forcing deck, okay? Which means every single card is the same force card, right? But the difference with this is you can fan it. So you could fan the cards, show every card to be different, okay? And they will see an entire deck of 52, okay? You could close the fan and have one card selected and bammo, it'll be your force card every single time. It's a great deck, great forcing deck. The disadvantage is the spectator cannot pull the card out. Okay, they can't pull the card out. They can't hold the cards themselves because every single card is gimmicked. And coming in at number 10, a one-way forcing deck. Now, what is a one-way forcing deck? Well, it's simply a deck of cards where every single card is exactly the same. And uh, it can be a great one-way forcing deck because it can fool magicians. It can fool magicians because sometimes a magician isn't even thinking that you would use a one-way forcing deck <laughs> because you can be pretty, pretty deceptive with it. If you have an indifferent card on the bottom, uh, you can shuffle the cards overhand. You can riffle shuffle them. It doesn't matter because every card's the same. And when you start doing things like that, the magician starts thinking about other things. <laughs> their minds just starts going to other things. And when you fan the cards and say, pick any card, that looks so fair. It's such a clean, fair image. They can withdraw the card because the cards aren't gimmicked and you will immediately know what card they have. It's not a deck I would overuse, okay? Not a deck I would overuse because, you know, you know again, uh, the method and obviously the force, but it can be a great Magician of Fuller. All right, so that's the end of the top 10. The top 10 with, of course, are one honorable mention. I hope I've introduced you to some new trick decks that perhaps you didn't know anything about. And uh, maybe I didn't mention one that you love. Is there a trick deck that you think is just a maze wow? <laughs> and you want to let us know, hey, post your kind and courteous comment down below. Uh, that's the great thing about the internet is we can share ideas, right? And so if you have an idea that you would like to share with the rest of the world, we would love to see it, love to hear it. And if I helped you out, please do me a favor, hit like, hit subscribe, and hit follow. Hit all the buttons, hit all the social medias, the clickety clicks, that really helps me out. And it tells me that you enjoy these videos and that you want me to make more. And a big, huge thanks to whomever uh, said that I should make this list. Uh, that was a good question, that was a good question. And if you ask a really good question, chances are I'll make a video about that one too. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time, bye.